it's time for your mix of movers and shakers, of doers and makers. It's time for Funko Fun Chat. Today's guests, he's the voice of Hisoka in Hunter Hunter, among many others. It's Keith Silverstein. You may know her as the voice of Bulbasaur and Clefairy in Pokemon. Meet Terra Sands. He's a WWE superstar. It's Xavier Woods. And now, let's mix it up with Funko Fun Chat. My name is Keith Silverstein. I've been doing voiceover for a little over 20 years now. I am Tara Sands. I started working in voiceover a million years ago. I am Mojo Jojo. <laughs> Kidding. WWE superstar Xavier Woods, AKA Austin Creed. So uh, if you play video games or watch anime, some original animation, you may have heard me. John Lee and Genshin Impact, Ahsoka from uh, Hunter x Hunter, Hawk Moth from Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, and uh, Torbjorn, Randy Tabark from Overwatch. Oh, I, I could do if you do like cry. <laughs> I did a lot of that in a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I played a really evil baby. I hosted a, a kids TV show for a while on Cartoon Network and I loved uh, my very first anime job was on Pokemon. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's a it's pretty big franchise. Clefairy, Clefairy. Sorry, sorry, Bubba, sorry. Bubba, sorry. I work with like some organizations that donate pops to kids in hospitals, and there's a joy around it. There's the regular Bulbasaur, there's the silver, there's the flock, there's the diamond. I can't hold this finger up without doing that. That's terrible. And then there's the two big ones. So there's six different Bulbasaurs. Hmm. You see, I've got bungee gum. Bungee gum contains the properties of both rubber and gum, you see. I made sure that everything he said, he said like this with confidence. And there's something about that. You know, that's not a nervous character. You know that immediately like that. Okay, who is this guy? He's, he's, he's weird, he's quirky. Uh, he creeps people out. And he also very much enjoys a good fight, like literally enjoys a good fight. So there's a bit of pleasure in his voice constantly. Welcome to SmackDown. You all did incredible in the ring last week, and it warms the cockles of my heart. As a professional wrestler, I have to be fully in tune with my body at all times. I have to know when I am hurt. I have to know when I am injured, because there's a very big difference. So uh, my senses of, of being able to touch and feel pleasure, pain, all of those things are very heightened. And there is the to a uh, ridiculous degree. I grew up in New Jersey, very close to where we are now, and uh, I was in a local singing competition at the Y. An agent was there and said, you know what, you could do voiceovers. And I went and I had to, it was for a wart cream, compound W wart cream, and I had to say something like, ew, gross, a wart. <laughs> and I got the job and I, my mom was like, what? They're Really? That's a job? And then I just kind of stuck with it. I just kept auditioning. I was doing theater in New York and all that stuff. And um, voiceover is just really where I kind of fell in love. Again, you know, people say like, oh, you can work in your pajamas. And I, and I sometimes I can. So I, I'm not giving that up. Yes, I am absolutely, totally a collector at heart. And that is why I say I do have to limit myself. I collect vinyl. Specifically, I mentioned I'm a Prince fan. I collect Prince and Prince-related vinyl. I've got at least 2,000, 2,500 records at home from all over the world, uh, promotional stuff, acetates, test pressings, whatever, right? And I also, not in-house, but I have a Magic the Gathering collection. I've been playing since 1994, so I have an incredible amount of cards and sealed boxes and all kinds of fun stuff. This is the best movie ever made. Well, this, Mortal Kombat and Hackers, but this is the greatest story of a father-son relationship ever told. A Goofy movie? I was so excited when it was coming out and I lost my mind. The music is incredible. Roxanne and Max, so good. Goofy did such a great job. Everyone in this movie, every act, voice actor, every animator, every person who put things together, bless you. Well, I w okay, I wouldn't be good at it, but I would want to be Ursula from The Little Mermaid. I mean, my God, what, like, what a juicy, fun villain to play. If I could make that my own and play with it, ooh, that would be fun. Um, well, there's, I have two answers for that. Um, I'm a big Marvel fan, so anybody Marvel would be great, and always is, but um, Daredevil's been my fave. But the other thing is, it's voicing that character that doesn't exist yet. So Tom Kenny voices SpongeBob SquarePants, but pre-Tom Kenny, there was no SpongeBob SquarePants. But to me, that's the kind of thing. So whatever that next gig is, that is an original thing that people will associate with my voice, that's the ideal for me. But Daredevil would be cool too. Real life heroes. Uh, my real life 
One of my real life favorites was a fictional character, Apollo Creed. Incredible. The greatest character of anything I've ever seen in my life. So I've essentially modeled my uh, professional life after him, trash talking and fighting. Real life, real life, my parents. It's a cop out answer, but it's true. These are my wonderful parents. They instilled a lot of uh, self-motivation into me so I could get things done when I wanted to get them done. One of the fun ones I got to do was Generator Rex for Cartoon Network. And, you know, I got to stand next to Mark Hamill for a day and tried not to fangirl. And J.K. Simmons was on that show. I mean, it was just a ridiculous cast. I, and that's the thing. It's like John DiMaggio was on that show. And just seeing, like, his the way he would improv. And again, this is all stuff that I've done, but just seeing a master do it, you're like, okay, let me just try to remember this next time I'm working. Let me just channel whatever I learned from these amazing actors. I always, when I, so I travel from town to town with yeah. wrestling, and so I will always stop at a local comic shop if I see one and just get something yeah. just to support, because I physical media, everything's going digital, which is great, but I want to make sure that my kids understand, hey, we used to actually turn pages, yeah, and this was really fun. I consider myself really lucky in the sense that um, when I got into anime and video games, the whole, this whole scene, when I started doing voiceover, that, you know, going to conventions and signing autographs was not an expectation. To now, later on, um, get that much recognition for some of the stuff that we do. The first time somebody comes up to you in tears and tells you that this character changed their lives, it's, it's, it's weird. You think like, wow, that's okay, but you're polite and you're, but when you stop and think about it, for, for those of us uh, older generation like myself, it makes perfect sense to us if you say to a, a, a musician like that album changed my life and I listened to this album and it just it guided me and it made me feel better every time I heard it. Like that makes sense to us because we're used to that. These video games, people are pouring 60 hours, 70, 80, 100 hours into these video games and they are uh, attaching themselves to these characters. So when I put it into that perspective, it makes perfect sense. It's just a generation beyond me. Now I have a great appreciation for that, but it, 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 it is, staggering sometimes. Uh, so I'm always thankful and I feel very blessed for that. Now that's a fun chat, but there's more. We have full interviews of each of these guests on our YouTube channel.